Hi everyone, welcome to the IoT Forge News Digest. This is episode 20. Today we will discuss the latest news in the IoT, robotics and embedded devices. Let's connect the dots. So, the latest headline. Qualcomm just bought Arduino. And honestly, nobody knows what to expect. If you scroll through the big YouTube makers channels, you will hear the same emotional note. Arduino, Arduino is what got me into hardware. I'll be greater forever. I'll be greater forever. But in my corner of the internet, I barely see anyone actually building with it anymore. ESP32s, STM32 Nucleus, Nordic NRF 52 something. That's the real activity. Even Silicon Labs boards pop up more often than actually Arduino in DIY project these days. And I have to admit something, I've never really owned the original one. I started with chip clones, kind of covered with flags and Sage 340 Windows driver adventure. And for the last 10 years, I built maybe two things with them. A pulse generator for my stepper motor driver maybe five years ago. And the virtual infrared wall for my Roomba maybe last year. And for this I choose the UNO because, you know, it has DC-DC converter built in and I already had a pile of 9V batteries with matching sockets. This is a pure manual addition to my smart outta home. No Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, just the regular batteries and buttons. So yeah, I'm torn. On one hand, I've heard from the people who work with Qualcomm chips in the big, serious, multi-million dollar projects. And they all say the same. Their software ecosystem can be painful. Bugs, tool chain, documentation, you name it. Not exactly beginning friendly. But on the other hand, Arduino's original magic was simplicity. The language. The tooling, the plug it in and it just works feeling. The feeling of instant success. Plug it in, blink the LED, boom, you're maker. If newcomers now face the kind of friction that pros see in Qualcomm world, they'll just drift away. Still, I'm curious. I want to explore Arduino AppLabs. See how it all ties together. Docker, Zephyr, AGI. It could be a bridge between the old Blink and LED days and something more industrial. But that's the big question. Who's the target now? Is Qualcomm aiming for industrial IoT, where their chips already play? Or do they want to stay in the enthusiast space, where Arduino built its legend? Both markets are crowded and demanding in totally different ways. So, yeah, let's keep an eye on this one. I would like to revisit this story a year from now and see whether Arduino is still teaching people how to blink their first LED or teaching robots how to blink back. It seems like our episodes Never go without a segment where we explore and discuss the latest in the robotics. And not just high force a metal machine walking across the stage, but actual research in the field. So let's talk about robots. And not soft robots, not swarm of insects like scouts, not today. Today I want to zoom in to clear direction we are seeing in the field. Two flavors that dominate the headlines and demo reels. First, task-specific robots. They aren't built to look like people. They don't wave, they don't walk. They just work quietly, efficiently, 
and often better than we can. Take the Roomba. It doesn't do much, but it does it over and over, year after year. No complaints, no coffee breaks. Or surgical robots like Da Vinci, with movements so precise, they filter out hand tremors, controlled by a human, enhanced by the machine. Agriculture drones. They fly over crops, scan, spray, optimize, no drama, just yield. Boston Dynamics spot. Four legs, sensors, and a job. Inspecting hazardous environment where no humans want to go. Warehouse bots. They don't walk their role. No arms, no faces. Just road planning and relentless efficiency. These robots don't care about being human. They are not trying to blend in. They are built to solve problems. Cheaper, safer, faster. Second, humanoid robots. This is a different game. This is the let's make machines that can operate our world philosophy. Think about it. Our entire environment is designed for us. Doorknobs, staircases, shopping carts, coffee makers. Rather than rebuilding the world for robots, the goal here is to build robots that can handle our world as is. That's where things like Tesla Optimus, Figure 01, Agility Digit, and Unity G1 come in. Two legs, two arms, maybe even a face. Why? Because that's what our world expects. If they succeed, they become the physical version of a smartphone. One platform, endless possibilities. Today it stack boxes, tomorrow it helps grandma. Next week it's flipping pancakes. But it is hard. Really hard. Walking is hard, grabbing object is hard. Balance, sensors, vision, planning. It's a full stack engineering Everest. And here's where it gets really interesting. There are a recent research project. And I won't spoil it. Just follow the link in the description. It's truly fascinating and worth your time. The core idea? Teaching robots not just to recognize objects, but to understand their function. And even more specifically, the function of parts of those objects. Not just knife, but butter knife versus bread knife. If you want to spread the jam, grab butter knife. Not just container, but jug, tear pot or bottle. And which part is meant for pouring? The model learns to associate shape with purpose. Not by label, not by brand, but by how that object is meant to interact with the world. And that, that might be the key to moving from recognition to understanding. Because we, as humans, Act based on affordances, what object invites us to do. And future robots? They'll need to think the same way. That is it for now. Don't forget to share with your fellow thinker and subscribe to stay tuned for more episodes of the IoT Forge News Digest. See you next time. Bye bye.